Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. Well, now it's time for the cognac show. I said cognac, ooh, ooh. I said cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm your fancy blonde, fancy dress. Space Gallery in Patrick, Long Island, and I am here with artist Dave Rogers, and we're standing in front of a painting that is me, and of course, I, the artist was inspired by me. Now, I'm, I'm just curious, Dave, I know, of course, the inspiration is me here in this painting, but can you tell my audience a little bit more about what inspired you, the colors and the graphic art that you incorporated into this painting? Um, well, for this new series that I'm doing, I'm doing mostly um, well-known, but not like super famous uh, people. You know, artists Just like, me. <laughs> artists like to do really famous people, um, but I know some really well-known people who have inspired me, who have been very supportive of me and my arts. Mm -hmm. um, so they inspire my work also. And so in doing my new work with these pieces, um, it's a combination of my older style, which is a neo-pop style, mm -hmm. and a little bit adding to my Impressionist period that I did many years ago, and then the symbolism, which is basically a mixture of Chinese and Egyptian and Aztec kind of writing that I put together. So on the paintings, I'm kind of telling a story. So this really is a language that you incorporated in um, the, my image. Right. So it's, it's a story that I'm telling, um, but it's an unreadable story. So it's, it's for the viewer to find the story for themselves through the motion of the symbols and through the color. Um, so you'll notice like on the painting, like part of it's filled in completely and then part of it's not filled in completely. Yes, I did notice that. I like that unfinished feel. Um, I picked that up while living in Asia. They like to leave a lot of the canvas kind of unfinished, undone. And so again, the, the viewer is allowed to fill in their own concept of how it would look if it was full. Um, I see. But does, it, does any of this mean anything? I mean, if you were to interpret it? It means something to me. 
What does it mean? <laughs> no, no. See, that's the, that's the secret to my pieces. Like, I don't want to give away the secrets. Like, I want each viewer to look at it and find their own feeling or their own meaning into the piece. Mm -hmm. um, and the great thing about the new works that I'm doing, I've gone back to make my own paint. Mm -hmm. So all my colors are handmade. Um, you can't buy them in stores. So they are unique to each painting that I do. Um, and like I said, all the symbols are unique to each painting also, and they tell the story of that painting. And you, of course, you love the pink on me, right? I the love the pink champagne kisses. <laughs> I see, yes. I was, when I was doing the colors, I was thinking about things like that, like, you know, the champagne and, and um, your bubbly personality and stuff like that. So that was very influential in the colors that I chose in order to do this piece. Well, I just love it. I love it. And I, I love the size, too. I think it's just a beautiful. Who knows? Maybe I will become the next Mona Lisa. In 200 years, 300 years from now, somebody might see this, and they'll say, this is like a Mona Lisa. You never know, right? You never know. No. As an artist, you hope. <laughs> As an artist, you do hope. And, and of course, Mona Lisa, I did see, I'm sure you've seen the Mona Lisa. It was not that much bigger than this. I think it's almost the same size. About the same size, yeah. People oh think it's really huge, but I thought it was, it was a huge work that big in paintings itself. Yeah, it's yeah. a small painting like this. It's not that big. And like I say, who knows? Maybe someday I might be the next Mona Lisa. But now you have some other pieces here that are interesting. Like I love Janis Joplin. That's a beautiful painting. What inspired you to create that piece of art? Um, I'm doing a musician series. So I'm really into jazz, blues, and folk music. It's a really big thing for me. Most of the artists that I'm doing, like I've done Ottoman Coleman, Miles Davis, B.B. King, I've met all of them. Janis Joplin is the first one in my musician series who I haven't met. But, Obviously, she's, right. she's deceased. Um, yeah. But I was really inspired by her music and um, by her life as an artist. And so when I was doing my musician series, I felt it would be wrong to leave her out of that series. Um, so I love doing the piece, um, adding the colors um, to talk about her life and her music and where she fits into the world today. She's, many artists are inspired by her, many musicians are inspired by her. Now, you're getting ready. I want you to also tell my audience what you're getting ready. You're going to be selling, I believe, internationally. Am I right about that? I just had a show in Korea. I have another show coming up in Korea. Um, I did the Contemporary Art Fair in Hong Kong. I'm doing Miami Basel, which Janis Joplin and Miles Davis pieces are going down to. Um, and then I'm getting ready for another show, the Affordable Art Fair in New York for next year. So I'm constantly working on pieces. Yeah, you're busy. Well, you know, as an artist, you, um, you, know, you do the art fairs, you do the shows, um, people see your work. You don't want to show the same stuff because people are like, well, I've seen that already. You know, I want to see something else. What else can they do? So you're constantly creating work. You're constantly working at it. Um, it's a nonstop job for an artist. And for me, in creating these pieces, especially the musician series, I do a lot of research. I listen to the music. I read their biographies. I look at like 20, 30 photographs. Um, so there's a lot of in-depth stuff that goes into every painting that I make. It's not just throwing paint on a canvas and saying, there it is. You, know. you also probably study their mannerisms and the different facial features that they have when they make, when they perform, I would think, right? Well, for a lot of the musicians, like I said, I've never met Janis Joplin, but I met Miles Davis. Um, I've seen him live in concert. I've met B.B. King. I've seen him live in concert. Um, so yeah, I've done, you know, I watch films. Um, like I said, there's I mean, a lot of research. I see you, that's like my pose, like that's a very Marilyn Monroe <laughs> type pose. That, that I your pose, yes. yeah. So, I mean, you know, knowing you and have talking to you before, um, but also like I look through all the pictures of you and, and get an idea of, of what makes you. What's my you persona? Know, at least how I see what makes you. Yeah, no, but you have, you're right on the money. I try. You really are. You're right on the money, and it's a beautiful painting, and I'm honored that you you painted me. That That's truly an honor. And like I said, who knows, two, three hundred years, maybe now even, it might happen. Somebody might say, this is a Mona Lisa, right? 
Like I said, as an artist, you always hope. <laughs> you always hope. I want you to tell my audience where we could go to find out more information. What is the website where we could find out more about you as an artist? Do you have a website? I do have a website. Um, they can find me on Facebook at daves.studio. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a website. It's davesartstudio.co. Okay. Right. Well, thank you, darling. It's always a pleasure to come by and take a look at what, you, what you're doing. And you are a terrific artist. And I thank you so much for thank this you. beautiful painting of me. And you know, you're, just, you're always welcome. <laughs> and we'll be back in a moment with more interviews. Keep watching, darlings. Pink Champagne Kisses. Welcome back, darlings. I'm Cognac with Elaine, and we are here at Art Space in Patchogue, Long Island. And I am here with Miss Patricia Kelly, artist Patricia Kelly. And we're standing in front of some of her artwork. And I must tell you, I love all these watercolor pieces. It has a very storybook quality to that. Can you tell my audience what we're really seeing behind us? Um, those are watercolor paintings. Um, I tend to use more color than most people. Um, which makes it unique, which yes. makes it different. And I like the story, like it almost looks like there's a, a prince and a fairy tale. <laughs> the, oh, the one over there, the yes, masquerade, yes. yes. The masquerade. It's kind of like Romeo and Juliet in and the balcony and, and, you know, ancient times together. Very, very nice. Now, now tell my audience. This is your gallery? I mean, this is all these paintings are not all yours, of course. No, it's not all mine, um, but it's for the art space residents, and also we also invite um, other people from all over. Long if, Island. If, yep, all over Long Island. Sometimes New York City, our curator and our um, gallery manager, he's very good. He gets work from all over the place. Now tell my ways how many picture, how many paintings are we seeing that you created that I are here? There's 34 today. 34 pieces. Wow. How mm -hmm. long did it take you to paint all these pieces? I started in 2008. Okay, and up to now. Yes, exactly. So you have a lot of love invested oh, in these paintings, I don't really you? Love it. Yeah. How long have you been an artist? Well, I've always done art. I started with um, more like interior design. I love architecture. Um, I do do a lot of buildings. <laughs> and um, then it just kind of evolved. I've always sketched. And I thought I would try painting, and I did, and I love it. And you love showing your art, too, to people like me, right? I do. <laughs> Well, it's nice if other people can enjoy it. And appreciate yeah. it, because it's, it's so beautiful. I mean, Thank your you. art is really beautiful. Thank you. Now, if we wanted to find out more information about your art, where can we go? Do you have a website? That's how, mm, that's true. It's under my name, Trisha Kelly. That's what I thought. You're right. OK. I'm well, not very that's okay, <laughs> technological. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me here and to oh, be showing me the art. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to have a, something to drink. Yes. <laughs> thank you, darling. Thank you. And we'll be back in a moment, darlings. More interviews coming up. Keep watching. Pink Champagne Kisses. Welcome back, darlings. I'm Cognac Will Elaine, and we're here at Art Space for the Patrick Art Council. And I'm here with this individual who is the curator, and he is going to introduce himself to the camera. Hi, I'm John Sino. I've been the curator of the Patrick Arts Council since its inception. Explain to my audience about this event. It's a pretty uh, wonderful crowd of people here that are enjoying the art. What is this event really all about that we, we're seeing here today, this evening? This particular, this particular exhibition is, um, is called Paired. Uh, there are eight different pairs of artists. One artist comes from an international symposium. They're here uh, as a group and uh, they're doing a residency. So I chose an artist from Long Island to match or pair with each of the artists that came from another country. Fascinating. I love this artwork right here. It's beautiful. Where is this from exactly? Well, this woman lives out east on Long Island. Christine, tell us a little bit about this symposium that we're looking at right now. 
I'm very glad that I've been invited to this symposium for art. Um, I'm from Austria and this is my first time to come here and to work in the United States and in New York. And I'm impressed how it's going on in the symposium work together with all the international artists. It's great what Jess and uh, Beth organized there and I'm very thankful for that to be here and to have my work in this exhibition or so. work is divine darling, it's divine. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's, yeah, good. it's really beautiful. And uh, so tell me, what do you think of this space? It's pretty nice, right? Uh, it was organized by Beth Chagramund and I think and Isli Museum and I, I think it's a great room to be here in the gallery. Well, you're working with a master here, the curator. He's been here for so many years. He knows what he's doing, Don. And he saw your art. He said, we have to put her in the gallery, right? Yes. So, so there are about 12 artists that came from from international places. If you want, they can come here to have a photo together with you. Maybe it's possible. How many pieces are you showing here in this right now? In this is all in this uh, in this symposium. I will have uh, print makings and uh, two pieces on canvas. Fabulous the next exhibition. Fabulous, fabulous. So the artists uh, that are international will be showing their finished work from their residency on October 30th at the Iceland Museum. Wonderful, that's wonderful. I'm so happy. Uh, Beth would be the best person to introduce you and to give you excellent information if you want. Well, I would like you to tell my audience where we could go to find out more information. What is the website of the Art Patrick Art Council? Well, it's simply patrickartscouncil.com. Wonderful. And you, darling, where can we go to learn more about your fabulous art here in Poland and in Long Island? What's your website? My website is www.kerts.at. And I want to thank you very much for both of you for talking to me right here at the Patchogue Art Council, right here at Art Space. It's a beautiful location, a beautiful place to display art right here on Long Island. And I thank you both very much for the wonderful interview. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. You. For, thank you so much. For talking to us. And we'll be back in a moment, darlings. More art, more entertainment, and more fashion. Keep watching. Big champagne kisses. Crybaby Productions, darlings.